Greetings, people of the internet. I'm Scott with CircWorks Art Labs. Welcome to the Underground Laboratory, where we create what? We create robots, alien zombies, and other imminent threats to humanity. We also create comics because right now we are doing the 100 Days of Making Comics Challenge. I'm doing round two. I've done this once before. But what this is, it's where you spend 30 minutes a day, every day, 30 minutes or more. You definitely, if you can spend more, definitely you want to do that. But at least 30 minutes a day, every day, working on your own personal comic book project. And you do that for 100 days straight and you let people know about it, you vlog about it, you talk about it, just to hold yourself accountable so people know that you're doing the challenge. Because that that's the trick, you know. Uh, sometimes if no one's paying attention, you can kind of lag off or, you know, just like don't worry about it or whatever. Nobody's watching, but you probably want to get on YouTube and kind of do what I'm doing and, and just start it off. Just see how it goes and, and, uh, and uh, yeah, just... Uh, just go for it, I guess. But anyway, so that's what the challenge is all about. Uh, I'm working on my personal comic book project. It's called Young and the Dead. Uh, these are some of the issues here. I'm going to show you some of the stuff in here. I got some stuff to talk about today. But uh, before we do that, where where are we in the challenge? So let's get our big uh, oversized pad of paper. Where's my big fat Sharpie? Oh, here it is in my pocket. All right. So, here we go. What is today? What day are we on right now? We are at day 73. Good old day 73. We are working our way up there. Getting, we've got fewer days ahead of us than behind us, and that, that is definitely good. So, day 73, that's where we're at, just so we don't lose track. Um, so back to the comic book. My comic book is called Young and the Dead. It's a kids versus zombie story. Just think Goonies meets Night of the Living Dead. Um, and... I wanted to talk, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm in the middle of issue, uh, issue four right now, and, uh, and as I, as I, you know, you tell the story, obviously you're working with characters, so you, when you, now when you create a comic book, you, you're everything, you're the director, you're the cinematographer, you are the actors, you're everything, so let's talk about the actors, and let's talk about acting with your characters today, so one thing that I like to do, and it may seem a little silly, but believe me, it helps because I like to, to when I'm writing the scene or whatever, I like to kind of act it out and I like to kind of figure out, you know, what my characters are doing. Because if you want, you know, if you if you want characters to be dynamic, you want you want them to act and you want them to express and not just with words because we can make our characters say whatever we want. That's that's fairly simple. I mean, sometimes dialogue can be a little difficult, but. But for the most part, that's kind of simple. But we can say so much with like body language and just the way our characters act. So think about that when you're writing a character. What is your character doing in that particular scene? What what it, what what can you say without words? What can you show by the way your characters are doing? Because if it's just a bunch of talking heads or just standing there, or you know, in a superhero, sure you want action stuff, and a lot of people get that right. But it's the quiet moments that you can do a lot with acting and things. And and my book has a lot of those because um, there's a lot of characters and. It's, it's more, I think it's more about those characters than the zombies and all that kind of stuff. So uh, let me kind of go into some of these pages um, and just show you a few things. Now, you want to look at, you want to look at like, um, you know, look to animators. Animators are so good at this, way better than I can. The people that, I love a lot of the comic books that the creators that I like, they kind of come from the animation world and they can get so expressive and everything. So pay attention to that kind of stuff. But um, so anyway, so I, I do my best. So we'll see where we're at. So this is a scene right here where we've got a few different expressions. There's a family sitting at the dinner table. I think I showed you guys this one before, um, but they're all kind of doing their own thing. Um, he's kind of just chowing down, kind of he's like always angry and stuff. He's a little perturbed, so he's just kind of like, I just kind of want to show that he's like, just does not want to be there. Obviously, this little guy here does not want to eat whatever vegetable or whatever they set in front of him. So there's some different, you know, facial expressions. So you can do a lot. Just think how, when you're in that situation, think what would you would do. So, you know, whether it's, you, you, and, and you can tell so much in the eyes and with eyebrows, especially eyebrows. So, um... That's why if you're doing, like, say if you're doing more cartoony stuff where a lot of times you simplify. So a lot of, a lot of people, 
if they're doing real simple cartoons, like something you might see in a newspaper strip, sometimes they don't add eye eyebrows to the characters, which I think is a mistake because you can get so expressive with that kind of stuff. But, you know, usually in our comic books, our characters, you know, if they're feeling a little more realistic, you know, they usually have eyebrows. But, and it seems weird I'm harping on eyebrows, but they are really so expressive. So, you know, whether you tilt it up or you kind of cock the eyebrow or whatever, you can just say a lot that way. And just, just sometimes get, get in a mirror and, and kind of do these different facial expressions and things like that. Um, let me go on to some other pages here. Um, and again, when you're thinking of your different scenes, so this is a scene I've got where uh, a character, one of the one of the adult characters, if most of the characters in my book are kids, but anyway, one of the adult characters kind of gets woken up in the middle of the morning, okay? So he's he's going to the door. Now, you could just have him go up to the door and kind of open it up and like, what's going on? But, but think how, think what would happen if somebody woke you up in the middle of the, you know, early morning. It's probably dark inside, so he goes to answer the door and it's kind of like, you know, think because it's bright and everything. So we kind of we kind of show that right here. Can get that? Was it zoom in? You see how he's kind of he's like this. So things like that. You just you may you may overlook certain things like that. It's just a little thing, but it helps. Um, you know, and think how your characters behave with other characters. So for instance. You know, what does this say? What is, when you cross your arms, what does it say? It's usually you're being a little defensive or standoffish or you're not welcoming at all. So we've got some characters that have a little bit of a conflict. Obviously right now, she's pretty much pointing into his chest like, that's not a good thing, you know? <laughs> and here she's, somebody has said something or she's not too happy, so she's crossing her arms like that. Um, so there's that let's see what uh, there was another I think there were some other things I wanted to show in here um, oh here's another one so so if you were say if you were getting ready to, to do battle or whatever and there's a lot of, there's a lot of things you can do with hands of course you see me here I'm always gesturing with my hands I do that a lot but so if you were like this like uh, that's like a mad scientist or somebody formulating some kind of dastardly plot or something like that or or maybe pondering something or whatever um, if you go like that what is that that's like you're getting ready to do battle or something so sir so, or just or again showing that uh, you know she's not you know she's you know maybe ready to start a fight or come on let's you know so there's that kind of stuff and there was a where's there were not there was another scene that i wanted to kind of show where was that one i think it was in this third issue um yeah okay so in this in this panel right here this character mitch he's kind of teasing they're they're friends but they kind of tease each other so he's kind of giving him like the stink eye like you know, now here's another thing when you're dealing with eyes and with characters. Um, now, just the style that I illustrate with my characters usually have kind of are kind of wide eyed. Um, now, in some some ways, I think that might be a mistake because um, if you've got characters, for instance, like if you look at the Peanuts, they've got or maybe that's not a good one or the Simpsons. The Simpsons can't really emote too much with their eyes because they're always just these big bulbous eyes. Now they'll make them go shut and, and they do some great stuff with them but for the most part they're always big like that so and they could probably do something with the pupils make them bigger and everything and that has a lot to do with everything too how your pupils dilate. Um, but for instance if you start with a character and they've got these beady little eyes if you're doing more cartoony stuff and then all of a sudden they go big. I mean, you can, you've got a lot of work room to work with right there from the little tiny to the big. My characters are kind of always wide eyed. Or if you think about like anime, um, and that's why I think, you know, I, it's kind of, I guess this is just my opinion or what I'm taking away from it. If you look, if you watch anime, a lot of times they're like overly expressive, like, like just the actions that just kind of goes 
crazy stuff that people wouldn't do in the real world and that may be because when they usually in anime they've got huge eyes so maybe they can't ex they can't really make them go bigger if they're surprised or whatever so then they have to over exaggerate things like that so they've got all that kind of shorthand so for instance in that that clip that I just showed you where the one character my character was kind of given the other one the stink eye I mean you could even if you wanted to go a little crazy with that shorthand you could even put like a little arrow and put stink or something like that and or just the you know kind of that stuff that they do in anime so that, that could be the reason why they do that so there's other ways around it like but um but sometimes I wonder if I would have made you know just regular eyes that way if they are surprised they can get a lot bigger because right now they don't they can't get a lot bigger than they are because they're always kind of wide-eyed now sometimes they'll have them closed like if they're you know but for the most part they're kind of wide-eyed and that's just the style so something to think about um, but yeah that's uh, that's pretty much it just think about Think about what you would do before you sit down and start drawing this stuff. Kind of act out the scene and uh, and see kind of how you would behave in a certain situation. Then you might be like, oh yeah, the character should be doing this instead of just kind of standing there and moving from scene to scene and not really doing much. So, um, And again, like I said, look towards animators. There's a lot of people that do way better than me, um, but just these are some of my examples from my book. And of course you can find that at CircWorks.com, all three issues. And uh, But let's see what I'm doing with issue number four. We're gonna go up here to the Parallelescope and uh, see what's going on with that right now. We are on to page six of Young and the Dead issue number four. And so yesterday, uh, I didn't really film what I did yesterday, but I just kind of laid out some of these panels and briefly did some um, perspective stuff that you'll see it's kind of towards the bottom. It's kind of off screen here. Um, but uh, now, I, so I printed that out and it's weird because it kind of shifted. I don't know if you can tell. If you look real close, you'll see that when it went through the printer, it kind of shifted because if you look at the lines, it's not quite lining up. But I think when I scan everything in, I can tilt it back. Um, so that was kind of weird. But but anyway, rather than let that stop me, I just went ahead and started penciling. And, and you know, a lot of this stuff I can fix digitally when I scan it back in. Um, but uh, yeah, so this uh, this this is uh, we're back to after I, I finally wrapped up that big uh, big double page spread and now we're back to what's going on after that so I, I don't know how much I want to give away um, but uh, just kind of dropping in some gestures and some characters and then below I've got a little more perspective stuff that's gonna take me a little while to kind of flesh out. Now this, this character that I'm drawing right now, um, and talking about fixing stuff uh, digitally, um, this character actually wears glasses, but I usually, I stop drawing the glasses because, I don't know, glasses are really hard to get the, the right angles. I mean, certain glasses, if I went a little more cartoony and just had basic like round glasses, but I'm trying to go for a certain look, and I could draw them in and everything, but it's it's easier just I've got like a little digital version and then I'll just skew it out in, in like Photoshop and then I'll place them on. Um, but I realized I was looking for a reference because I look back to previous issues and I forgot to put the glasses. There's a page in issue three where I forgot to do that. And there's another kind of weird thing that I noticed with one of the character's ear. It's kind of like not symmetrical to his other ear. So I think I'm gonna, before I make another print run, I think I'm gonna go and kind of fix those things. Um, Cause I need some more, some more uh, copies of comics for the convention coming up. Um, that's coming up in May, and I pro something I don't know. Kablam! Sometimes they take about a month to order or so. Lately, it was sooner, but it's getting convention time, so I better jump on that soon. Um, but yeah, just uh, dropping in some of these these characters, and uh, this is like one of my ultimate favorite uh, Mexican food restaurants, and I'm like. Uh, you know, my Achilles heel is like chips and salsa. And I know a lot of times I'll show this stuff and I really am on a diet every once in a while, I kind of break it, but it seems like those are the ones that I show you guys. But for the most part, I'm doing pretty good on my diet, but sometimes you need to take a little bit of a break. Back once again to put an end to another day of 100 days of making comics. This is day 73, or that was day 73. We're gonna crumble that up, toss it in the garbage, and I will see you guys tomorrow for day 74 of 100 Days of Making Comics. That is all.
everyone. You've seen the process. Now you can check out the story. Issues 1 through 3 of Young and the Dead are available at my website at surfworks.com. Also, follow me on social media at the links listed below. Subscribe and check out some of the other videos in this series. There's much more to come.